way it's the therapeutic drive through and you are in luck because the line today is long at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to talk about your brain on anxiety. Do you remember the old uh, little ad campaign? It had an egg and it said, this is your brain. And then they fry the egg and it's like, this is your brain on drugs. Well, very similar to this today. This is going to be your brain and this is gonna be your brain on anxiety. So what's all this about? Why do I think this important? So we teach stress and anxiety to a bunch of elementary age kids. And I fully believe if you know what happens and what goes on in your body, maybe during a stressful situation, during an argument, maybe if you're feeling really anxious, if you know what's going on in your body, you're better able to control what's going on in your body. So I think this is a great demonstration, especially for kids. It's one of my favorite. I tell it to everybody I know. So guess what? I'm gonna tell it to you today. Okay, so put your two hands together. Just so you know, that is approximately the size of your brain. Um, if you are like most kids in any groups, you went like this to make the size of your brain. And then when I told you that was approximately the size of your brain, you made your fist bigger <laughs> to make your brain bigger. That's okay, we all do it. Okay, so today um, we're gonna pretend that this is your brain. This is how it sits in your head, okay? So this part right here is the frontal lobe of your brain, the frontal lobe of your brain takes care of all your reasoning, okay? Um, this continues to develop for quite a while after you're born, but this is where all that knowledge and all that um, reasoning and being able to have logic, that's where all of this is in the frontal lobe, okay? So right here, this is the back part of our brain. In the back part is what we call the reptilian brain because it's the oldest part of your brain it's the part of your brain that we say so easy a caveman can do it right okay so what happens in the reptilian part of your brain way back here in the back well that is all that eat sleep cry you know you're hungry you should take a nap you should run from a dinosaur okay very simple things keep you alive all those basic functions that's what happens way back here in the reptilian part of your brain so back here in the reptilian part of your brain it says i'm hungry eat a cupcake but up here in the front part of your brain where all this logic is it goes Girl, you had three cupcakes today. Maybe you should have a carrot stick, okay? Uh, back here in the back part of your brain, it says, wow, I'm really tired. I need a nap. And right here in the front part of your brain, it says, please don't fall asleep right now. You're talking to your boss, okay? That's how that works in your brain. Okay, then right here in the very middle of your brain area, we have what we call the amygdala, okay? Um, the amygdala is essentially your body's smoke detector. Does everyone have a smoke detector in their house? If you don't, call your local fire department. They will come to your house and install one because smoke detectors save lives. That's a very important lesson to remember, okay? So your amygdala is just like the smoke detector in your house. She senses danger she starts screaming, okay? That's what your amygdala does. And because she's right here in the middle part of your brain, okay, frontal lobe in your reptilian brain, because she's right here in the middle part of your brain, when she starts screaming, there's a fire and she starts sounding the alarm. Do you know what happens in that moment? The front part of your brain, your frontal lobe, they all run out the door to get away from the smoke, okay? So the amygdala's going off, right? Because there's danger in the kitchen. Everybody starts running out. Well, guess what happens? When everybody starts running out to get away from the amygdala who's sounding her alarm, the frontal lobe is knocked offline, okay? So now 
every response we have is back here pretty much being controlled by our reptilian part of our brain. That means if we're upset, we scream about it, okay? If we feel like we're in danger, we get up and we run, we flee, okay? That is what happens because we no longer have the front part of our brain engaged to reason out. This is why firefighters train all the time. They have to make things that would normally be in the front part of their brain, like logic and reason and planning on what to do. It has to be so programmed in their brain that they can still function when the front part's running out of the fire. So when the amygdala says, you know, there's a fire, you know, and all the firefighters are running in the building, the front part of their brain's like, ah. Uh -huh we're getting out of here. We're running out. So they have to know exactly what to do. And it's going to be um, kind of taken control by the reptilian part of their brain. It has to be second nature. So that's exactly what happens in our bodies. So when we have stressful thoughts, maybe we're in an argument with somebody, the amygdala sounds the smoke alarm, which sends the frontal lobe of your brain running out of the building. And so now we're being controlled by our very basic reptilian part of our brain, okay? The problem with that, because you're thinking, well, yeah, saves lives, right? Run from a bear, you know? If you're in an argument, yell at somebody. But the problem is the amygdala is just like the smoke detector in your kitchen, okay? The amygdala is like the smoke detector and just like, oh, there's smoke in the kitchen, all right? But the amygdala can't tell whether the smoke is real or the, whether the smoke is fake. Is this something, a scenario you're making up in your head that you just continue to have and so you're still alerting your body feels that way, okay? Um, you know, the smoke detector's going off, is it mom <laughs> cooking bacon <laughs> again? Or, you know, is there an actual fire and an actual emergency? Okay. Th so how, what happens? We got all these little people up here. Everybody's running out of the building. The amygdala's going off. We're being controlled by the reptilian part of the brain. What are we going to do to get everything back online so we can actually think and have reason and uh, be able to understand our emotions and what's going on. Well, we're going to do what we would do if there was smoke in front of us. We're going to inhale and then we're going to blow out that smoke. When we take calming breaths, it allows the front part of our brain, our frontal lobe to re-engage so we can make wise choices and we can make good decisions, okay? So don't let your smoke detector, your amygdala falsely signal your brain to run into action when maybe it's something that you're just thinking about, okay? So there you go. That is how your brain works when your brain is on stress and anxiety. There you go. Um, you know the routine. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, share, all that kind of good stuff. It's the therapeutic drive-through.